Hey there, Professor S, and I'm here with my friend, the Eukaryotic Cell, to talk to you for a few minutes about an organelle. Uh, but in this video, I want to take about five minutes to talk about the one organelle in there that's also found in prokaryotic cells, and that's the ribosome. Now, ribosomes are tiny. Uh, they don't have a membrane. I'm, I've gone ahead and labeled two of them because there are a lot of them in that figure. I'm only going to label two. Uh, but to really understand them, we need to look at them more closely because, like I said, they're tiny. So let's take that top one and just zoom in on it. Now, you should immediately see that there's two subunits, and I'll come back to that in just a moment. Ribosomes are composed of two substances, protein and ribosomal ribonucleic acid, ribosomal RNA or rRNA, which is produced in the nucleoli of the eukaryotic nucleus. And again, there are two subunits. If we separate them so you can get a better look here, uh, they have highly complex and technical names that are very hard to learn. Um, they're, they're called large and small, large and small subunits. Now, in defining the ribosomes of prokaryotes and eukaryotes, we define it from the point of view of how they're measured. And the unit of measure that we use for organelles like ribosomes is a unit of measure that messes with people who aren't familiar with it, and that's called the Svedberg. It's not a measure of mass, density, or length. It's a measure of, of sedimentation rate during ultracentrifugation. In other words, if you spin a, an organelle very rapidly in a centrifuge, it's a measure of how long it takes that organelle to come out of solution. Bigger objects, bigger organelles take longer than smaller ones, but the real kicker here is it's a non-additive, non-SI unit meaning the small and large subunits have their own individual Svedberg measurements, but the whole ribosome isn't simply adding those two numbers up together because that larger ribosome sediments at a different rate. Um, I will probably do a video blog to talk about why we use this unit and what its advantages are. Uh, for right now, let's just focus on pro and eukaryotic ribosome sizes. Um, so first off, <laughs> prokaryotic ribosomes have a 50S large subunit and a 30S small subunit, the entire prokaryotic ribosome has a, is a 70S ribosome. So right there, they, they don't add up uh, neatly. That's prokaryotes. Now, you, <laughs> eukaryotes have a uh, 60S large subunit and a 40S small subunit, which adds up to an 80S whole ribosome. And it's also worth noting plastid organelles in eukaryotes have their own ribosomes, which are closer in size and, and structure to the uh, prokaryotic. Now, a couple final notes here. Functionally, what do ribosomes do? In both prokaryotes and eukaryotes, they engage in protein synthesis. They do translation. They build the proteins that the cell uses. Now, in the case of eukaryotes, we often talk about there being two types of ribosomes. So I actually want to uh, warp back in time to before we zoomed in and, and look at those two ribosomes I originally labeled. <laughs> Uh, one is called a free ribosome and one is called fixed. The free ribosome is free in the cytoplasm and it builds proteins that will be used in the cytoplasm. The fixed ribosomes are associated with the endoplasmic reticulum uh, the rough ER specifically, and the proteins they synthesize into the lumen of the ER will be put into storage for use later, will be secreted from the cell, or will be used in the cell membrane. Basically, they're going to be used someplace other than the cytoplasm. Strictly speaking, fixed ribosomes ain't fixed to the uh, ER permanently, but that's a whole other topic, and I will be definitely be doing a video blog on that subject uh, and why we use the term and uh, why we can still work with it even though they aren't technically permanently fixed. Uh, the fixed ribosomes temporarily associate with the ER during uh, protein synthesis. Now, to do protein synthesis, which is a huge topic down the line, you also need to know something about the binding sites that are found on the ribosome so that it can actually do that process, but that's another five minutes.
feeling a good one. You ready? Okay, here we go. Hey, this is Professor S, and if you enjoyed that video, here's a couple others you may find useful. And uh, don't forget to hit the button to subscribe so you don't miss anything that I post as it comes out. What are you laughing about? That was a good take. We may have to redo that take. Redo it? Why? Because you laughing? No, your fly was down the entire take. <laughs>